Welcome back to the show and today my friends we're going to be breaking down if and when we might get a sequel to Eidos Montreal's hit 2021 superhero game Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll discuss the surprise success of the first game, audience reaction, sales, and how this thick brothy melting pot of factors has affected the chances of a sequel. Now, Eidos Montreal is largely known for its work on the dystopian FPS action role-playing Deus Ex series of games, which always had an emphasis on being sleek, futuristic, and cool, but also for taking itself pretty seriously in a grim, dark, transhumanism kind of way. It therefore took the gaming world completely by surprise when in 2021 the studio, then under the ownership of Square Enix, released a video game based on the Marvel IP Guardians of the Galaxy. The dialogue straight out of the gate in this new series was incredible, well written, and well voice acted, which in turn made the game a hilarious and welcoming experience from the get go, particularly for fans of the superhero genre who had already come to know the core cast from their comic book and cinematic universe appearances. And that's impressive in its own right, as the cast created from the source material was clearly heavily influenced by both mediums, which could have resulted in an absolute mess, but instead culminated in a core of characters that were both immediately recognized yet inexplicably fresh. That paired with the bright and bold bubblegum and gold sci-fi aesthetic, solid storytelling, and countless other charming factors such as the huddle combat mechanic made it an immediate hit with both the player base and many critics alike. It even made it into the Game of the Year conversation for a lot of gamers and actually walked away with the Best Narrative Award at the 2021 Game Awards. However, despite all of that, Square Enix branded the game as having underperformed at launch, which would partially have been due to unrealistic corporate expectations and the fact that consumers were initially wary of the game after the poor overall quality of Square Enix's earlier live-action superhero title Marvel's Avengers. Still despite this, Guardians continued to pick up new fans owing partially to the long tail that Marvel single player games seem to have and also due to its inclusion in Xbox's Game Pass service which allowed a second wave of gamers to experience the quality of the game. As a result, there are now a whole lot of people hoping for a sequel from the team over at Eidos Montreal, and given the overwhelmingly positive reception that the game has had from critics and gamers alike, there was a good reason to hope. However, to date, Square Enix had made no official announcement about a potential sequel, which left a lot of fans worried. And to make matters worse, a recent acquisition may have made the prospects of a follow-up less likely and at the very least added another layer of uncertainty to the conversation. Earlier this week it was announced that the Swedish video game holding company Embracer Group had agreed to purchase the studios Square Enix Montreal, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal from Square Enix for a surprisingly low price tag of 300 million US dollars. Included in that deal were the studio's physical assets and employees, along with dozens of IPs including Eidos Montreal's Deus Ex and Guardians of the Galaxy. In a press statement following the announcement, the CEO of the Embracer Group, Lars Wingerfors, said, We are thrilled to welcome these studios into the Embracer Group. We recognize the fantastic IP, world-class creative talent, and track record of excellence that have been demonstrated time and time again over the past decade. It has been a great pleasure meeting the leadership teams and discussing future plans for how they can realize their ambitions and become a greater part of Embracer. So with that in mind, the question then becomes whether the leadership at Embracer Group will see the value in creating a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy, and if so, where it will be placed on Eidos Montreal's list of development priorities. First off, while Square wasn't overwhelmed by the performance of the game at launch, we do know that it seems to have grown in popularity since then and has acquired a strong base of supporters from among critics and the public alike. And given the extremely positive reception and the goodwill surrounding the game, it's fair to say that a second game in what would then be an established franchise would sell a lot better than the first. However, it's also worth noting that the Embracer Group doesn't simply have the right to make Marvel games. They have to license the Guardians IP from Marvel and Disney. And for a big popular franchise like that, well, let's just say that I don't have the figures in front of me, but it doesn't come cheap and it eats into the potential profits. And all of that has to be balanced against the potential profits that could be made by making another game in the Deus Ex franchise, which is also likely to happen sometime down the road. So in short, Embracer have the option of abandoning the Guardians franchise as PlayStation did with Days Gone and essentially letting it go dormant with the potential to revive it further down the line. Or they could move forward with the sequel and build on the goodwill and hype created by the first game while it's still fresh in gamers' heads. If it's the former, then we won't be seeing a Guardian sequel for many years to come, however if it was in the early stages of development prior to the acquisition, well we could make an educated guess as to when it might release. 
And on that note, during an interview with the Radio Times' Rob Lean back in April, Mary DeMarle, who was the senior narrative director for the game, commented regarding the prospects of a sequel that, on that one, I think we're gonna leave you in suspense. I mean, we surprised everyone by being secret on that one for the longest time, so we're just gonna maintain a little air of mystery on that one. So there's lots of on that ones there, and you could take it in a couple of ways. First off, there were no direct indications that a sequel wasn't on the table, and so they could have been in the early stages of writing and conceptualizing the next game, but obviously as employees, they weren't in a position to openly hint at anything solid. Alternatively, it could be that it's not happening and that, again, they just weren't allowed to let on that they're working on another IP. But getting back to it, and assuming that Guardians 2 is in early development, we know that the first game had a development cycle of around three years stretching from the release of their last game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 2018, to the launch of Guardians in October 2021. And of course, the pathfinding process for a sequel should flow a little bit quicker than it would in the first game in an IP, as a lot of the character groundwork and to an extent the world building heavy lifting has already been done. But then if we factor in the inevitable disruption that comes hand in hand with an acquisition like this, I think that we could see, in a best case scenario, the game launching in mid to late 2024. Or if there are some major hiccups in the development process, you could see that slide to early 2025. And that's it for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode and to let me know in the comments section below what you loved about the first game and what you think our chances are of ever actually seeing a sequel. In the meantime, be sure to keep it here for all the biggest news, reviews and reactions from around the video gaming industry.